Welcome to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. I'm Jason Bowman, and I love cars. Today I'm going to tell you my story of the Neon SRT4. Hope you enjoy it. My first experience with the Dodge Neon SRT4 is when they were new. I was working at a speed shop. A customer wanted to put a muffler on it because he thought it was too loud. The SRT4 came from the factory, basically straight piped after the cat. Out of principle, I suggested he may have bought the wrong car. This infuriated him. Going against my religious beliefs, I investigated it and there didn't seem to be a bolt-on solution at the time. He probably didn't believe me and refused to take no for an answer. He came back when I wasn't there. My co-workers ordered him a cap back for a regular neon, which of course didn't bolt on. Not sure if that wanker ever silenced his SRT4. I sure hope not. 19 years later, the SRT4s are coming up in my Facebook Marketplace search for under $10,000 in manual transmission. It may be time for a reignited interest. Like many performance cars, the SRT4 had humble economy car roots. Dodge transformed the cutesy neon into a fire-breathing turbocharged monster. The SRT4 was developed in-house by PVO, Performance Vehicle Operations. In 2004, PVO was renamed SRT. Street and Racing Technology. The 4 in SRT4 refers to the four-cylinder engine. The executive vice president of Chrysler Product Development and Design, Tom Gale, attended the 1998 SEMA Specialty Equipment Market Association show in Las Vegas. Gale wandered around the show and formulated a list of mods he saw on the tuner cars at the show. The plan was to build a factory tuner car out of the humble neon. Gale was no stranger to building high-performance cars. You may have heard of another car he helped develop. The Dodge Viper. Gail assembled a group of yum yum yum. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jackie McLaren. Please remember to like and subscribe and comment to Jason Bowman Loves Cars. Gail assembled a group of young, enthusiastic car enthusiasts from within the Chrysler and Dodge ranks, which had first-hand knowledge of tuning neons. The team built a concept car in just four months. The 2000 Neon SRT concept 2-liter 16-valve four-cylinder made 208 horsepower and 180 foot-pounds of torque at the crank thanks in part to the Eaton Supercharger pumping 11 PSI at boost. The SRT concept put down 179 horsepower and 149 foot-pounds of torque to the wheels when Sport Compact Car Magazine tested it in the February 2001 issue. The development mule accumulated 1,000 miles in under two weeks on the test track. The concept neon SRT was shown at both the November 1999 SEMA show and the January 2000 Las Vegas Auto Show with favorable responses from the showgoers. The next hurdle the team faced was trying to make the concept a reality. The team built a second mule with an eye towards using more production-oriented parts. The goal was to make the project more financially viable for production. The second car was parked in Gale's parking spot in hopes the top brass would take notice. Despite the team's efforts, in the fall of 2000, the project was rejected by the executive committee. The development team was given a list of reasons why the car was not approved. They worked through the list item by item. After building three more development mules, the team was rewarded for all their efforts in the spring of 2001 when the executive committee greenlighted the project for production. The production car featured the A853 turbocharged 2.4 liter four cylinder engine. The concept cars used a supercharger, however, the production car used a reverse rotation Mitsubishi TDO4 LR 16GK turbocharger with the maximum boost level of 15 psi. The A53 engine was nearly identical to the A855 engine used in the 2003 Chrysler PT Cruiser Turbo. The key difference was the PT Cruiser Turbo used a specific intake manifold to fit in the tight confines of the cruiser's engine bay. Backing up the engine was a new Venture T855 speed manual transmission. The tranny was based on a unit found in the European market turbo diesel minivans. For SRT4 use, it was given a Saks performance clutch and equal length half shafts. The SRT4 suspension used stiffer springs, Tokiko struts, and beefier front and rear sway bars. SRT4 also got a quick ratio steering rack, cruiser steering knuckles, and an updated subframe. The package also got bigger binders. The fronts were an extra thick 11 inch diameter vented disc to prevent warping and the rears were a 10.6 inch non-vented disc. The calipers were a single piston on all four corners. The wheels were 17 by 6 inch cast aluminum with 205 50 17 Michelin Pilot Sport Performance tires. SRT4s got a specific body kit and a giant rear wang. In 2003, the interior featured front sport seats modeled after the Viper seats. In 2004, standard neon seats with side airbags were optional. A full carbon fiber shift boot and steering wheel were used along with a proper cue ball shift knob and aluminum pedal pads. The gauge cluster was an SRT exclusive with special silver faces. An actual Autometer branded boost gauge was to the right of the cluster. The SRT4 had power windows up front, 
and manual rear windows to keep the cost down, the Neon SRT4 went on sale to the public in 2003. It was the second quickest Chrysler Dodge you could buy that year. Second only to the mighty Dodge Viper. The 2004 SRT4s got more power and torque and a Quafe limited slip differential to harness it. The power bump came from larger injectors and new engine management software. To get the power to the ground, Dodge used BF Goodrich G-Force TA KDW-2 Ultra High Performance Tires. Dodge peeled the neon badges off the SRT4 for 2004 in the bin, marketing the car simply as an SRT4. Dodge only expected to sell 2,500 units per year. To their delight, more than 25,000 neon SRT4s were sold between 2003 and 2005. 2005 was the last year of production for the second generation neon and the SRT4. In 2008, the Dodge SRT4 nameplate returned on the Caliber SRT4. Stock Performance Car and driver tested the 2003 Neon SRT4. It did 0-60 to 60 in 5.6 seconds and did the quarter mile in 14.2 seconds. The stock quarter mile times were all over the place because I imagine launching one of these is a little tricky. The 0-60 to 60 times database has the 2003 Dodge Neon SRT4's 0 to 60 mile per hour listed at 5.5 seconds and the quarter mile listed at 13.9 seconds. They also list the 2004 Dodge SRT4 0 to 60 mile per hour and 5.2 and the quarter mile in 13.7 seconds. Aftermarket performance. There is a thriving aftermarket for the SRT4. Free flowing exhaust. Cold air intake. Computer tune. Turbo upgrade. Suspension goodies. Lowering springs. Coilovers. Beefier sway bars. Control arm bushings. Racing. Holy, that SRT4 took that Cobalt SS to Gapplebee's. Many SRTs get autocrossed. Great for track days. The best use of an SRT4 is to go for a rip in the canyons on a beautiful summer's day. Wait, what was that? Holy crap, another jackalope sighting! Buying an SRT4. For my research, these cars are pretty bulletproof. There are a few things to look out for, though. In 2022, these cars are an absolute bargain. They're an absolute bargain when they are new, too. Being a purpose-built performance car that costs under $20,000, due to their low price of admission, many of them have been beaten half to death. Keep an eye out for obvious signs of abuse. One of the only weak spots was the transmission. While test driving a potential purchase, ensure that it shifts smoothly. If your wallet allows, spring for an 04 and 05. If you can, to get the stronger axles, limited slip differential, and stronger transmission and larger injectors. JD Power had a good overview of SRT pricing. I took a boo on Marketplace, and JD Power was on the right track for pricing. One thing I do know is they were a great bargain when they were new, and they are a great used car bargain now. Thanks for watching Jason Bowman Loves Cars and my story of the Neon SRT4. Please like, comment, and subscribe.